Depending on where you get your nerdy news, this year's Google I.O. was the story of a boring company doing important things or an important company doing boring things. Either way, much of the coverage from Mountain View bore mentions of mundanity, the sense that the sizzle had fizzled. And as a video guy trying to make an interesting piece out of the show, I get that. I missed the gadget-studded widget fest of last year, with phone-controlled paint-slinging robots and internet-generating balloons the size of a house. Without attractions like that, this year's show felt a bit more muted. But as my colleague Jerry Hildenbrand argues over at Android Central, I.O. isn't supposed to be a novelty gadget carnival. It's a developer's conference. For devs, that means it's a place to learn how to build apps and services for Google's ecosystem. For me, it's a three-day-long reminder of just how much sweat goes into the software that's now running on two billion devices across the world. The raw pulp of I.O. is no secret. You can watch from home as executives unveil the stuff that's pushed Google so far into our lives, like the unassuming little orb that's suddenly a serious threat to both Amazon Echo and your home telephone, or the next version of Android that'll help you get even more done on your phone while cutting down on some of the notification noise, or the new big data-driven tools that'll put a concert into your calendar just by pointing your camera at the marquee, or the new API that'll let you put in a Panera order just by talking to Google Assistant. Sadly, it'll do nothing to make their croutons edible. But being on the ground gave me a glimpse of all the tiny stuff that goes into making all this work. I've learned about the challenges involved in connecting your phone to your car wirelessly instead of through a cable. I visited a security briefing where I learned that Google scans 50 billion apps a day to keep malware out of the Play Store. I sat in on an Android Wear panel that taught me how much battery life you can save on a smartwatch just by changing the color of a screen, or shortening up an animation a little bit. I learned why the Kotlin programming language is important, TLDR, it's simpler for developers to work with, but just as robust. And I started to think that maybe Google Assistant will finally be able to do on a Google Home what it can do on a phone, and vice versa. Of course, not everything was ring-dings and yodels. A visit to the Tango Tent showed me little advancement in Google's augmented reality project since my time with it last November, and I was disappointed that the new self-contained virtual reality headgear wasn't yet ready for trials. And yeah, I'd be lying if I said that all this new machine learning in Google Photos didn't give me pause, or that I'm entirely comfortable routing every single one of my voice calls at home through Google Home. But Jerry deserves quoting once more. This is cool stuff that everyone wants to use. And so the privacy versus convenience debate continues. The utility versus novelty conversation continues. Because the work continues. For an observer like me, Google I.O. is a three-day showcase of people who are pushing technology to the next phase. That's literally people at computers typing away. It may not have the wow factor of computer glasses literally falling out of the sky, but it's only boring if you haven't been paying attention. Mr. Mubble will be back in the studio next week to turn a smartphone into a desktop, sort of. Subscribe so you don't miss it, and visit Android Central for all the meaty details from I.O. 2017. Till next time, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends. <laughs>